I'm Brandon. And I'm Brandon. And welcome back to Apollo City Comics, your anything and everything comic book podcast. Uh, dude, what's up? It's a very um, exciting day because we actually recorded two weeks in a row. We took a little break. And <laughs> we were like on track two weeks again. in a row. Like the one thing that you're here for, we finally did it consecutively. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and for a very awesome and special occasion. Stuff's been pretty wild lately. Like we, we've been very busy. Uh, this comic book anthology. You know, we'll just jump right into that real fast. Uh, we launched submissions for a punk rock theme comic book anthology and people could create a one to six page story to go into this anthology. doesn't matter what the genre is. Um, basically as long as it has a punk rock vibe via the art, via the story, via the way everything is, that's just like, I mean, all we're looking for and shoot us a message on Twitter, or Instagram. Um, and we'll answer anything you need to know about it to make it a smooth and easy process for taking pitches so that you could save time. If you have an artist and you're a writer or vice versa, um, you have a creative team and you want to like formulate an idea and then make it just for this, like send us the pitch and that way we could green light mm -hmm. it and save you some time mm -hmm. in case you don't want to do it, but you're just doing it for this anthology. If you have a completed story, we'll take that as well. Um, and you have till the end of November and we'll be going yeah. through some submissions every month to kind of filter some stuff out, give some people hopefully feedback if we can, and we'll put all this together. Yeah, and uh, we're doing our best to get through them all, and we just want to make sure we give everybody the attention they deserve. And, you know, thank you, everybody, for submitting and just keep them coming. Yeah, and, I mean, aside from that, things are awesome. And we have an interview today. Uh, we haven't had an interview in a while, so why don't you get ready and snuggle up as we talk about – actually, first, get your cup of coffee from Coffee and a Comic that you probably ordered from coffeeandacomic.com where you get <laughs> – Oh, your book's bagged and boarded and you get coffee in your order? How can you like deny that? Dude, nobody likes bagging and boarding books. All your comics go to, tr like, if you have animals, I have a cat, fucks up everything. That's why you need bags and boards. <laughs> all my, my cat's just so old and lazy. She just doesn't want to mess up anything anymore. Fucking douche, T'Challa. He'll pop up right <laughs> next to you. But that's why I order from coffeeandcomic.com. You get 15% off below. Um, and our boy Frank, go check out his new shop. He has a brick and mortar mm -hmm. now. Congrats. On my side of the country. He's yeah, over in California. Know. So hit him up, set up a pull list, and uh, support a nice little local business comic book shop. Um, and enjoy the hell of the coffee he's been giving. It's delicious. I don't drink it. My roommate does. Um, but uh, hello. Da I'm going to fuck it up. David? David. Hey. David. Yeah, there it is. David. Yes, David. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's yes. just right, cool. a, it's just a it's just an ethnic David. It's fine, yeah. you know. You for all you white boys out there, you can still call me Dave. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like underlined the V to make sure I was like David. Like it's really I, I've met, yeah. I've met like at least like two other Davids in my life. You know? Yeah. I'm from El Paso, there Texas. You go. I'm from yeah. the border yeah. of you know what I mean of Mexico. You should Mexico. you should be able to say it just fine, man. <laughs> yeah. Growing up in the mission in San Francisco, I've definitely come across a few. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but dude, I mean, artist, writer, creator, letter, dude, you, you're launching a book on Kickstarter that's associated mm. with the lesser known comics. They're helping publish and put it out there. Shout out to Mark for putting all this together and like, you know, supporting all these indie creators. He's the one who's helping us with our anthology as well. So that's how we came wow. into connection. I was hanging out in Mark's, uh, we were driving back from Incredible Con down in South Carolina where we had a quick discussion to get you on the show and everything. And we lined all that up. Um, so, I mean, super shout out to Mark um, for putting all this together and, and then getting you out there and launching this Kickstarter. Tell us about the book. Yeah. Tell us about your experience with Lesser Known. Uh, man, uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Mark. He's, he's a, just a super sweet, really dorky guy with great hair. Yeah, um, he does have great hair. I am just... <laughs> he seems... He seems to he seems to know what's going on even when he doesn't know what's going on, which is great because mm -hmm. I definitely don't know what's going on in, in the world of comic books. Uh, yeah, I actually reached out to him in a very unprofessional capacity many moons ago. It was like mid pandemic, and I was working, working. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was like working, working, working on my other book, Narita, and I just sent him. I saw he was posting stuff about comics and all the comics he was showing. On Instagram looked really cool. I thought, whatever, I'll, I'll send him a message. And I was like, hey, you should put out my book. 
And that was it. Just uh, probably like a, a sweaty, smiley face emoji. I don't know. It was like so unprofessional. Mm. And then I guess a couple of months ago, somebody kind of caught on that I had sent that message and said, hey, I'm going to put you in touch with so-and-so. You should, you should really message so-and-so. They're more important than I am. I like, okay, sure. So I sent a message and then lo and behold, Mark gets back to me and then he set up a call and it just kind of dominoes started to fall. I had already set up a Kickstarter for the Yuriko book and oh, cool. I had already completed the first issue and I, I was ready to roll, but I didn't really know what to do. So Lesser Known Comics has really helped out a lot with that. Nice. Yeah. Also, uh, it's worth mentioning that um, Mark's really good at like getting back to people. <laughs> like the dudes get flooded <laughs> with messages and he just somehow manages to respond to everybody. <laughs> and he's, he responded to me like extremely fast. Yeah. yeah, he his his um whole like little network and actually hanging out with him for the weekend, and he was just always on the phone, just phone call, phone call, phone call, and then just like dialing stuff up, and then he's like, "I need to take a break, dude. This is insane." And then I <laughs> like with the submissions, people have been flooding his inbox for just asking information about the punk anthology, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm so sorry. Like, I know you're launching a Kickstarter right now. You have all this, none of us thought it'd be like get this much attention." And he was like, oh, "We'll get to it. <laughs> we'll get to it." But yeah, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad that, you know, that's the cool thing about Lesser Known. They really try to get books out there to have, you know, creators just get a platform and kind of get more of their mm-hmm. exposure out. And it's kind of, it's that's the yeah. hardest part about being a comic book creator is just trying to get, like, your stuff out there and uh, published and everything. You know what I mean? Like, that's the, that's, mm-hmm. it seems impossible unless you're like shooting straight for like IDW or like, or if you're doing smaller stuff like Webtoon, which is a different format, like it's really hard for yeah. you to like kind of get a published book out there. So his whole approach is. Probably- yeah. But even with, even with Webtoons, and this is not to, to dog um, those sorts of things, my dog is trying to get into the room. He's scratching at the door. Little bastard. Go away, human. I don't want to be your friend. I right love now. animals. <laughs> All right, I'll let him in. Anyway, yeah, no, like, <laughs> get in here, you dork. All right. Same Brandon goes through. So every episode. Yeah. yeah, literally. And then when my cat's here, she's always like ready to eat, trying to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my cat's a bastard. He just disappears for like months on end. <laughs> Comes so- home and his ears are ripped open and he's all bloody. And he's like, feed me. I stink. I'm like, dude, what? Ah, it's gross. Did you ever see uh, yeah. uh, Fritz the Cat from? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Oh <laughs> so that man, is... that's my that's my cat. Except he's an orange. He's an orange tabby, and there's a lot of orange tabby cats in the neighborhood. There you go. We're taking him to the vet. I promise. Like in October, he's only like ten years old, but we're gonna get him snipped. Oh. <laughs> So he's been around, yeah, yeah. There's... <laughs> I wasn't sure that he was really my cat, but now I guess I've kind of settled on the fact that he's definitely my cat. You know, it's a weird what relationship. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's unfolding. My t- my bandmates shame me pretty hard for that because they're they're animal lovers and they're like, dude, you're such a horrible pet owner. It's the worst. I mean, if the animal's cool with it too, you know what I mean? Yeah, like that's a I bond mean, you create. That's a, a unwritten agreement, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. It, I'm a huge cat person and I've always been like back and forth with indoor, outdoor. If they really enjoy outdoor, you can't really fight against it. And, you know, you can't really control what they do 100% of the time. So it's like, if they're going out and doing their thing, you can control them. But if they find a way to escape, it's like, I don't know, man. Like, I'd love to protect my animals. Don't get me wrong, but they're a free spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I know. Last time my cat disappeared, he, he, when he came back, it was literally three months later, and he was all like scrawny and emaciated and gross oh my looking. God. And so we started like feeding him, feeding him, feeding him, trying to fatten him back up. And my daughter was like, Where do you think he went? I was like, Well, man, this would make a great like graphic novel. Like he gets <laughs> he gets trapped in he gets trapped in this like cat lady's house. He's crazy. She doesn't let any cats outside ever. So he gets in a fight with the biggest cat in the yard. You know, it's like real jail mentality. Dang. And then he has to make a pact with this rat who's been there forever, who's in the cage, who's just going around real slow on his wheel. He's like, I tell you what you do. You have to talk to big mama. She'll get you out. You know, it's like this big nasty cat that never talks to anybody. And he has to like bust out of a window and it's like lightning storm. Yeah, it's going to be a great, there you go. great comic book <laughs> for kids. Yeah, for kids. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's gonna be real gnarly though. Like 
tattoo jail cats and stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, going to that, like, where did you know? What was it? What was your start with like writing and drawing? How did that come about? Like, where? Well, uh, I, my wife and I owned a small art gallery in Austin, Texas, for oh, cool. about seven or eight years. Oh yeah, you're um, in Texas. I went right? to. Yeah, 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 you're in Austin. I'm in okay. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I was making a lot of prints because I'm a printmaker, sort of. Uh, I went to school for that at UC Austin. Um, and so like a lot of screen printing, a lot of uh, lithography, Italia, woodcuts, all that kind of stuff. And I always loved printed things. I like wanted to hold something for visceral, you know. Nice. And uh, so then when we closed our art gallery after he he who shall not be named got voted into office back in whatever the hell mm -hmm. and everybody freaked out and didn't want to spend money on art anymore or anything cool mm -hmm. or creative um we closed that business and i started working as a, a carpenter and i didn't have a creative outlet anymore really yeah. uh, i was just kind of swinging a hammer and doing contract work mm -hmm. um and then I slowly started by saying, okay, look, you just kind of wake up every morning before the kid gets up, before you got to get everybody ready for school and all that stuff. And just draw for a little bit. Just try, you know, because I'd been ruminating on this idea of a comic book uh, forever. And so I, I finally just kind of forced myself into enough of a routine to, to get the gears rolling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Damn. But, so this okay. was just like a pure passion, like, I need to find something to do and I need to like use an outlet and you just yeah. start putting out comic books on your own. That's beautiful, dude. That's insane. Yeah. That is like the working man story to like, yeah. make <laughs> my day job. I'm sick of this time to go make comics. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. 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 No, I was like, I was like writing poems and looking at myself and like busted mirrors when I was remodeling bathrooms and stuff and thinking about how horrible my life was and whatever, you know, and I figured I can translate this into something a little bit less, uh, mm -hmm. less, uh, I don't know, tragic, you know? I mean, yeah, perfect. So, I mean, that's how a lot of, yeah, that's how a lot of creative like projects kind of come about, right? Like you go through the reality of your yeah. life, whether it's good or bad, uh, you're enjoying it or if it sucks. And then you just kind of like, it's kind of, that's the whole part of it being creative is you want to express yourself in a certain medium and you don't know how, or you don't know which medium and you just kind of go into it and then it becomes something. At least for mm -hmm. me personally, I feel like that's always been like the process of creating a story that didn't really have a start for you, but even room like sitting on it and then it becomes something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could you could be you know you have this idea in your head, like yeah. you said, it's like sitting there, and then something happens at work or during your day life or whatever, and it kind of clicks, and you think, mm -hmm. oh. Well, that could be this, or that could tie into stuff. I mean, because it's all human experience, whether you're a vampire, yeah. or you're, you're a, yeah. a mermaid, or you're a yeah. king from the southern kingdoms who's fighting to save his land, or whatever. It's all or the human experience. It doesn't. Yeah, or a cat. <laughs> or a cat. Out out a cat lady's house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but now that we're talking about the book, I was, I just kind of wanted to pick your brain about kind of like your bullet points of like the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. uh, more of like you know it's talking about how this is like a issue one first of all which mm -hmm. just means it's going to be ongoing at least from the looks of it it would be it would continue you know it's not just a standalone i hope story. so yeah if mark doesn't get sick of me yeah there you go <laughs> uh well the other question i have is that it's a vampire story based in 1900 so is it it's pronounced soul right yes yeah yeah uh, I'm just kind of curious of like where you kind of got the inspiration to not only vampire story but to base it in South Korea and that time period. Um, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of Korean horror films like uh -huh. you know, Old Boy, Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, all, you know all of that stuff. Um, and I always loved how those stories kind of unfolded. And, and and the horror narrative and there's a little bit of comedy in there you know I mean there's actually uh -huh. a bit of comedy in there um but I, I was always kind of fascinated with that culture there's also a little bit of logistics because um in the comic world let's face it if you're if you're basing something in Japanese culture man stakes is high because there's some like awesome comics that have come out of there for generations yeah and so the manga 
<laughs> when you're, you're competing yeah. against like the Japanese culture, like straight head on, I'm like, I don't think I'm tough enough. I don't think I could do it. You know, but but Korea, maybe I could take them on. I don't know. I don't know of any Korean <laughs> illustrators yeah. yet that could give me a run for my money. I could be wrong. Prove yeah. the wrong people. But uh, that was... part of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, and sorry, I just got a bunch of questions about this because also, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I'm just more like, did you ever like uh, dive into reading manhwa by any chance? No. Oh, Not okay. Ma- manhwa is uh, I could be saying it wrong, but it, it's uh, Korean comics. Okay. Yeah. I was saying. So, oh, uh, sorry. I'm not supposed to cuss, right? No, you're. No, nah, you can cuss. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I don't mean to blindside okay. you. I was just. Uh, you know, it's I, again. I could be pronouncing it wrong. Um, I. I haven't dabbled too much into it myself because I was going to kind of lead into asking about like your Instagram page because. I always say this: if any listener wants to correct me, and I'm totally wrong, I'll admit if I'm wrong. But uh, a lot of manhwa, the way it's printed digitally, is you kind of scroll to read it. So you start from the top and work your way down. That's like uh, kind of like, like webtoon style. That's yeah, like. but like it's formatted for that. So it's vertical, right? And it's all about scrolling. Uh, I had a student explain it in a class I had, basically. So I'm going based off what they told me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing, too, is your Instagram kind of has that layout where like the thumbnails create an image. And it kind of follows that format of Manwa. Oh yeah, the way your Instagram like page. Yeah, because you scroll, you know. Yeah. So, I was I more just curious. Did huh? he freeze? I think he froze up. Oh no! Did he freeze? He looks like he was so into the conversation in that yes. exact pose. Like I thought <laughs> oh, he was no. like, absorbing and listening. I'm gonna take a screenshot. Oh, he came out. Damn. That's cool. We got okay. It. it is pronounced Manwa. Let's go. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Are you talking loud right now? It was funny because it did freeze with him like staring. Yeah, man. I want to take a screenshot of that goon pad. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> there we go. Whoa. Hey. Da- David is alive. I died. I'm sorry. My phone literally overheated. It's all good. Dude, it's so die. funny because like we couldn't tell that. You were if you're just listening or because the way it froze your face was like perfectly there it was like you were just actively <laughs> listening and just like I'm at us. i didn't want to comment on anything you had to say hang on just No, shut up. You lie. Leave me alone. You bastard. No. Shut up. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Now you're good. All right, I'm 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 back. I think I'm back. All right. Yeah. Here. You might want to move it up just a little. Catch your face. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. Nothing nice. to see all here, right. folks. That- <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. It happens. No, yeah. It, that's an easy thing to edit out. I just. Yeah. Right. We can. Um... So, so you were talking about the Korean comic book, Magwa. Is that right? I linked it actually in the Zoom chat. It's pronounced Manwa. 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 Yeah. So, Ma- long story. Yeah. Long story short, Manwa is Korean comics that are um, basically like from like. Korean, Korean creators, obviously. Um, and they're like any other comics you would read. They're just kind of like influenced by Korean culture and Korean people. Yeah. Um, and that basically like scroll the other... format you have on your Instagram yeah. has that like vibe to it. Kind of like how Webtoon kind of does their stuff. But yeah, like the... your, your design work on your Instagram is... Yeah, because oh. I was explaining uh, before we cut out was that uh, typically when you're reading their digital comics, they're formatted to be scrolled from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. So the comics yeah, themselves yeah. are formatted to be read that way. And I, I thought it was interesting when looking at your Instagram that when you look at the thumbnails, they create those images of your comics, but they kind of also follow that scroll format just because yeah. the way Instagram is set up. So in, in a way, it's like Manwa influenced in like comics already, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I, uh, I met up with a guy um, <clears throat> who was a kind of a used to be a comic illustrator back in the day, and he was trying to give me some pointers about stuff. And I went and checked out his account, and he had grid posts. And I was like, dang, that's cool. When you look at his full account, if you if you just catch an image, like I followed him. And an image would come up, and I'd be like, what is this even an image of? It's like a piece of a puzzle. And so then it would draw me to his page. And then I would look, and I'd be able to see the whole thing. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I committed to it kind of early on, and now I'm stuck. Like, I, if, you, if you just post one picture of something now, it just destroys the, the whole grid all the way Yeah. It's so be I have to post nine. three of it. Yeah. Yeah, three, six, nine, twelve. We have to, you know. Yeah, but it you makes me commit. like, yeah, my, my output has gotten a lot higher because I'm like, okay, I'll wait until I got three full pages done, then I'll post all three pages, that kind of thing. So. Oh, nice. There you go. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah I was, uh, I was just kind of curious, just kind of like, uh, you know. I never really read any because I didn't know about it until like a student in my class did a presentation about it, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, it is popular, but it's also, I guess, maybe in America, it's not as popular. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've never heard of it, but um, I'm definitely going to check it out now. Oh, yeah. You, if you just Google it, you'll find websites, you know, Webtoons and all that. Like, um, you know, there's plenty of sources out there and websites recommending plenty of reads. Uh, I've been looking looking to, like, dive into it myself. I just, you know, I haven't reading so many other comics. Uh, but there you go. Yeah. Now you got something else on your to-do list. <laughs> yeah, man. Just pile it up. Stack it up. It's cool. Yeah. So, like, when you were... How long have you been drawing for now? This sounds like a very recent, like, life change. Or has it... Was it, like, years ago that you committed mm -hmm. and switched over to this? Or were you, like... Uh, uh, I, Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, were you like I always want to tell a vampire story, but just wasn't sure how, you know? No, the, the vampire, the vampire thing was sort of random because like mm -hmm. I don't really know a lot about vampires. They're not like, oh, I love vampires. I just read Dracula last year. You oh, know, nice, yeah. I, I'm yeah. uh, the book is boring. It's, it's shit, more. Of, <laughs> 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 it's like, did him. you read it as a? Did you read it as an adult? as a kid as an like, adult like i read you? it like a year ago and like i read like <laughs> the first like quarter i'm just like, getting dope and then it just like does nothing for like a million years yeah. when was it written like 18 back in the day yeah back in the day he's like <laughs> yeah. all you gotta know is electricity did not exist <laughs> yeah there was gas lights gas yeah. lights and they, just, they had the cylinders to record themselves onto they weren't even like records so yeah that's all you need to know um the vampire thing it, it just like with with mermaids sort of I, I don't know anything about them and so it's kind of an excuse for me to dive in a little bit and learn about yeah. them and the history and the culture and all the weird stuff because i'm like oh well i want this to happen in the book that'd be really cool and then i think oh dang but sunlight ugh, how do i work around that you know there's always so, so and then you get to build your own you know what how do your vampires you, you know react yeah. to light or all the stuff you get to build it yourself but you don't have to follow you know the the, the tropes that are already set up i mean dracula was walking around in the daylight he just looked like a creep yeah but it's a super pale <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. You know? Man, does, does dracula have eyebrows oh good question they never mentioned it in the they said he had a yeah. high aquiline forehead. That's right. Because oh. <laughs> he comes on very. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great detail to remember from that book. Like, yeah, I know, oh, right? Yeah. That's such a... um, high aquiline forehead. <laughs> yeah. no, that, that's, that's how pretty... I would say it too. Like, when you're reading and you read it all stupid, like that makes it much more enjoyable. You should reread it with a terrible accent. Yeah, I should I just check do. it back. I got to check it out. I got yeah, to I'm just you <laughs> the audio book from it, and you'll read it. I know, books. right? That's, that's yeah. I mean. There you go. That's untapped potential right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting because to, to agree to your point, like everybody like always does their version of a monster story or a creature story, whatever you want to label it as. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody always gets to a point where they do vampires or zombies or something, you know, or, or in your case, yeah. mermaids. Yeah. And yeah. you always kind of like want to create this version of a creature where you go, okay, well, What's the difference that mine does? Yeah. You know, what's the what's the lore aspect that I'm kind of changing up or adding to this like whole idea of what a vampire is, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, with 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 Yuriko, um, 
part of the reason I wanted to set it in Asia is because there was it's a, it's a vampire, so the story can be ancient if you want it to be, right? So, like in the novel, uh, it starts talking about her as a little kid. She, not to give anything away, but she gets her head cut off a couple times, and every time that happens, she kind of loses her mind a little bit. Like mm-hmm. when she gr- grows back together, she just has starts like she's all fucked up, basically. So she'll start having weird flashbacks to things that she had previously forgotten about her past, but it's all woozy and you can't really tell what's real and what's not. So it starts, she starts remembering being like a 10 year old in the forest of Goryeo, which is uh, what Korea was called when it was a kingdom before it was called Korea. Back when the Mongols, back when the Mongols invaded, right? So I'm doing all this research. I'm like, dang, I want to draw some Mongols. That'd be tight. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. In, mo- in most vampire stories, they take pra- place in you know, Transylvania or England, or like it's very mm-hmm. golfing, very uh, you know high yeah. collars, yeah. high aquiline foreheads. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a new <laughs> genre. <laughs> 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 but you know, if you, if you have an Asian vampire, it comes with all sorts of other things that you can dive into mm-hmm. that um, have to do with the monster stories of that that area or like you know, the mythology behind all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just way more for me to explore. I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to do a vampire comic that was set in Transylvania. It would just uh-huh. be, because, you know. Did, it's been done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, well, and like Mike Mignola has done such an awesome job of saying all monsters, I've researched all of them. I know everything <laughs> there is to know. And you definitely don't know as much as me because I'm a total nerd about stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Well, and dude, good. his Dracula book kicked ass, the one that was based off. I, that. Uh, I mean, it's also hard because Mike Magnolia is it Magnolia or Magnolia? Magnolia, Magnolia. Magnolia I don't know. Oh, okay. He's, yeah. He's also like the biggest sweetheart in comics, so it's like really hard to like <laughs> want to say he's yeah. wrong. You know, like the dude's so nice and yeah. good at what he does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 So uh, this kind of leads into my other question that I was going to ask was like, you know, you found yourself wanting to do this vampire story that you felt like, you know, you could do something different by having it based like, you know, in, in Korea. And what I'm curious about was like, did you ever have a moment where when you were kind of like planning for it or writing it, were you kind of scared? Like going, okay, I want to be respectful of the cold. I want to make sure that you know i do my research and just kind of like how that process was for you and like uh, in the making of it you know yeah so um i i saw i i, I can i i can feel like i identify with other ethnicities in a way that is sort of unique because I, my my ethnicity um i'm a minority i'm a part Kumano Indian mm-hmm. from West Texas and part Spaniard, part Mexican, part white boy. So I never really fit in the culture here in Texas. It was like way too much racism oh, yeah, dude. here. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> That's why I got out. So, oh, dude. Yeah. The, the things <laughs> yeah. Brandon told me, because I, I, I'm born and raised in San Francisco, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, it's cool. not the most, it's not the most perfect city, but it's definitely a lot more like progressive. Right. And like, Friendly, and accepting, and all this yeah, stuff. And yeah, very absolutely. open. And, and I live, I live in Austin, which is like it's a blueberry in a bowl of tomato soup. I mean, it's you know, so, <laughs> that's such a I've never heard of it put that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like we, we make this. My whole family makes a joke. They're like, yeah, anywhere you look, you can see Texas from there. You know, there it is. There's Texas. It's right. It's right over there. Just don't go over there. Because there's bubbles with shotguns, and they will kill you guys. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, all of us, yeah. all of us hippies, kind of stuck together, and, and that's what yeah. Austin is all about. But that being said, as far as like respecting other people's cultures, um, I would love to go to Korea on the book tour so that people could teach me what I've done wrong. Yeah, Mark, that, that's, let's do it. that's yeah. Part of my, yeah, that's part of my goal. Is like, all right, 
Holy, tell me, tell me how stupid I am. It's great, but I need to be. I want to go to Seoul. Yeah, for you to tell me this. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, totally. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just curious because I'm pretty sure us because I don't know if Brandon's mentioned it, but we both went to school for writing, right? Like we've done a lot of like oh, cool. writing exercises and like you know we got our degrees in it and you get put in situations like in classes where you have to write from a different perspective and you kind of learn how yeah. to like you know mm-hmm. how to like write from a different person's like point of view mm-hmm. and you know personally for me it's very nerve-wracking like I never want to mess it up you know what I mean <laughs> like I, I it's 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 scary to me you know well well I can see that I can see that if you're trying to write from a specific person's point of view you know like if you're if it's if it's a real person person a real real human um you know i i i i I like to think that all of the the tropes and stories and 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 tales and things that fairy tales or whatever they're all based on human experience like you're going to come across a cinderella story Mm -hmm. that comes from africa because in africa they have the same human experience as hans Mm -hmm. christian anderson had you know what i'm saying or in france or whatever you know so i think it's for me it's a matter of trying to um capture a a human experience Mm -hmm. of like for example the little kid that yuriko is a little kid in the book she's 10 she loses her family to a bunch of mongols who are tracing through this through the through the jungle trying to get back to through the forest trying to get back to you know um what mongolia after the war is splintered and blah 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 it's just like any other human that has to deal with the loss of their family. You know what I mean, that's kind of what I tried to center on. So I'm not centering on like, well, but it's a Korean girl who lost her family. So it's totally different. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's loss is loss. And, you know. Yeah, dude. I yeah, yeah totally. Me, um, this like screenplay I just wrote and like those who have read it, like my handful of friends, it's like essentially like a lesbian love story. And it's one of those things. It's just like you just write these people as humans and you just think of people mm-hmm. as humans. I'm not trying to like mm-hmm. offend or anything, but that's how the characters came out. And it's just like, yeah. you know what? if I just take a human approach to their emotions and their actions, you're probably going to nail it right on the head at that point. You know, I think when people try to like just overdo it or really focus in on one aspect of something or they're too scared and they try to really overemphasize that's when you're just like no just pull back just like what would you do mm-hmm. in this situation and then like think yeah about, totally. like just move it around a little bit you know um mm-hmm. that's a good approach for that and that takes away a lot of that fear of like am i getting this right like am i accurate mm-hmm. as a writer and creator when it's just like you know i know I know the human apps that the, the the golden theme between all of us that you know what we all relate to and what makes sense. Yeah, and especially since we're all vampires. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and mermaids don't exist. How would they feel? Hmm. Hmm. Very and dry. then you get to make that up. You're just like, if I was just like yeah. <laughs> underwater all damn day long. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So um, anyway, like, how, how would us- I wear shoes? Yeah, <laughs> that's so weird. She doesn't wear shoes for a long time until somebody finally says, we you know, she loses them right away. She makes friends with a cat and finally, you know, fairies happen and all kinds of stupid stuff. And the she talks to the cat. She's like, why have you been following me around? And he's like, because you smell like fish <laughs> and he's like what he's like why do you curse all the time she's like because my job is to take my shirt off for sailors that's how i learned how to speak land speak you know is through sailors so they curse yeah <laughs> you know? there you go yeah where did this mermaid story come from like what was well where did the idea of fruition from the inspiration kind of behind it maybe um, kind of uh, like just I, have an idea and that you just elaborate on that idea pretty much well <clears throat> my uh, a good friend of mine named jamie spinello she's an amazing artist who i met through the gallery our, my art gallery is um so we started talking about mermaids and fairies over way too much sponsored vodka because when you're a gallery owner you get sponsored alcohol and when no one shows up to the art opening you just drink it all and then you start talking about fairies there you um go. She, she, <laughs> She gave me a book called, uh, uh, what's it called? It's called Fairies, Gnomes, and Other Little People by Thomas Kitely. And this thing is like an encyclopedia. It's got to be 700, 800 pages long. And it reads like nonfiction. 
And it's all these stories about gnomes and elves and fairies and mermaids and all this stuff. And there's so much of that human experience. Uh, mermaids getting trapped on land, uh, gnomes getting chased out of the hill that they're going to plow down and build a, a church on. It's like, well, that's the ethnic people of Mexico who got chased out by the Spaniards. You know, I mean, it just, you see all these tropes that happen and you're like, man, and that's wrapped up in this nice, neat little bow. And it happened with a bunch of dwarves, apparently, in Wales. What? You know, it's excellent toilet reading, for sure. Awesome. That sounds great. Is, is this book available? Is it accessible for yeah, people? I think, yeah. I think so. Uh, I mean, she gave it to me. It's got a ripped up cover. It's pretty old. But yeah, it's, it's a real book. Oh, it's nice. a real book. It's got great, great stories in there. You want to learn about all the weird stuff. I mean, and, and then they'll like cite the author if there is an author. And sometimes they'll, they'll cite, you know, so and so grim. Hmm, okay. Or so and so. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like you're just, you know, lumping into Brothers Grimm along with all the other fairy tale people. Mm-hmm. So it's like the legit versions of all of those weird stories, which is pretty, oh. pretty fun to read. That's pretty yeah. rad. I got to check that out for sure. Yeah. That sounds super yeah. cool. So when did you start working on your mermaid book? Um, uh, when did that like my, begin? My, my kid was like kindergarten. So she was like six and she's 14 now. Okay. So many moons ago, I started, I, I did the first issue, like just drawing on paper. I got some bristle board and some ink and said, well, I'm going to make a comic book. And I did. And it was kind of terrible. And I printed some, and then I went to a little uh, comic con in Austin called Staple that I don't know if they do anymore, but it's all just zines and oh, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mother-in-law was the owner of the convention center that this guy was having his his con at. And so I said, yo, I don't have any money, but can I just set up a table in the corner? And the dude who was running the con was like, you're such a bastard. Just pay me a booth fee. You broke bastard. And I'm like, I'm sorry. But yeah, so I, you know, that was my first experience. And I kind of got hooked. I was like, well, it's really fun. You make a comic book and then you give it to people or sell it to people and they're interested. And, you know, it's, yeah, why, why not? Why not? Why do yeah. anything else? Yeah, you know? mm, exactly. The goal. The yeah. life goal right there. Just do it and make it happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, where so. is, what's happening after, you know, we have Yuriko number one coming out. And then it sounds like you're going to be mm-hmm. continuing this mermaid story. Um, what's what's happening past that uh (laughs) i have i have uh two other things in the works uh first of all i have this really awesome story about um this punk rock club where there's like this awesome punk band playing and these dudes are like underage and they're kind of like doing drugs on the back patio they get busted and it's such a huge bar fight and people start playing blood and it gets real gnarly and this girl hits this guy in the, in the face with a cheese grater who's trying to like kind of roll up on her. It's very, very punk rock. And I don't know who would be interested in that. Like, I'm trying to find some kind of outlet that I might can, have some sort of. Oh, I can only wonder. Because um, punk comics yeah, aren't like too accessible, I feel. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't know. Really. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions or whatever, but I've been kind of kicking that around for a while. I'll look into that. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like I think I got it, and I run away. <laughs> I'll be uh, back with an answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, no, I would really like to be part of that anthology. I yes. Some, some pretty awesome yes. stories from my time as a bartender. Dude, yeah. answer yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's your qualifications? Doesn't matter. You got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can drop punkers getting knocked out, like for sure. Um, Amazing. Because I know two power oh, cords. Yeah. yeah, two of them. <laughs> that's it. I can move them around, but that's it. Um, I uh, And then I also have a book called Yuki the Dragon Slayer. That's about, um, it's about a girl from a different galaxy who comes from a family of dragon slayers. And she ends yeah, up, yeah, there you go. Like, if she wants, she just comes through this tear in the universe and like, bam, she's like a fireball just slams right into my daughter's middle school. Um, so we went and did a lot of reference drawing of her middle school. And then this dragon follows her through the portal. And the whole issue one is she just proceeds, proceeds to just destroy the school fighting this dragon. And she's, of course, got, you know, like a six foot long berserker sword. And she's mm. kind of petite or whatever. And it's much more cartoony. 
but yeah, that, that's full on like grayscale dot pattern manga to the max. Mm-hmm. So that sounds. Fun. I want to do that, but um, yeah, I, I, I have a lot of weird things that I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, that makes some of the best content sometimes. You know, like mm-hmm. yeah, that's the beauty. Just let the imagination run wild. You know, you're not hurting anybody. Yeah. So just you want to make yeah. your crazy vampire mermaid dragon slaying stories go for it you know yeah yeah you know i mean how, you can't get any dumber than stupid right no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you obviously have read my stories <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah but i'm hoping to put out um uh, narita book one with mark uh this spring Cool. And he's making messages of doing some cons and showing up and being real dorky. I can, I can show up in my He-Man costume and just like, oh yeah. yeah. Are you going to be doing any um, upcoming cons in that case? Uh, well, I, I'm, there's there's one in in South Texas, uh, South Texas Comic Con that's coming up. That's kind of a biggie. You know? I think that the tabling fee is pretty high, so I'd have to get some other folks. Hopefully, some other lesser known comics fools that also live in and around Austin to nice. hop on that with me. And then we can go and like table together. Hopefully. Nice. Yeah. That, well, and he, then, they and got then, people everywhere. So you definitely can make some connections. Yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. And then uh, he sent me a link to the Houston. There's a Houston comic con coming up too. That's in Je- February, February 18th. Nice. So I want to be nice. there. We'll see. I don't know. Stay that's busy. a cool thing. Like it's you're in a thing. cool part of Texas where it's integrated. Like your sis, you know, uh, mm-hmm. well, uh, San Antonio. You have Houston. You have Dallas. You have Austin. Yeah. I was in El Paso where there wasn't like fucking shit near me. <laughs> <No. for> fucking... <laughs> like, no. Dude, Brandon Nothing. gave me his address yeah. one time. I looked it up on Google Maps. I was like, oh shit, you're barely well, even in Texas. Yeah, like, like, yeah. yeah. Very, like yeah. nine hours to get to Austin. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, yeah totally. That's no, a I have, I have family. Time. Family out in El Paso, man. Ooh. Cool. That was a terrible drive back in the 80s, 90s. No AC in the Volvo station wagon driving across the desert. Oh, oh yeah. Man. There you go. Yeah. Sounds like a real yeah. Texas experience. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. You, yeah. Haven't, you haven't experienced the state until you've driven eight hours into one direction. It felt like you've gone nowhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then suddenly it smells like cow shit. You're like, oh, God, we're in love it. Wow. Yeah. It, it, yeah. The closest I can get to that feeling is like when I drive, like, vertically through california like yes, growing, yeah. growing across the state easy but when you're going from like san francisco to so like socal mm-hmm. it feels like the longest oh, drive and it's only six hours you know <laughs> like it, it's long <laughs> enough man yeah, yeah sure you get cow shit still too <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. um, but that's uh bad. um well that's cool I'm glad you're doing conventions i'm glad you're like branching out there and whatnot yeah no that's it's a crucial part it's also pretty awesome, respectable that you're just like, you know what? I feel like making comics, and you just did it, and then here you are. You know, like <laughs> that's one of the best yeah, things I'm, you can do is just make it happen. Yeah, yeah, and I had no idea how to make it happen. I even started like trying to put together the Kickstarter campaign on my own before I got in touch with Mark, before we hooked up, mm-hmm. and um, I, you know, shopped it to him and added him as a collaborator. And said, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Does this look okay? And he's like, dude, that looks fantastic. You took all the legwork out for me. I don't have to like coach you on this at all. Like, oh, okay, c- cool. Uh, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a pain. Yeah, we're gonna be prepping up that pretty soon too yeah, for the we're, anthology. We're going through our own the... first round of all this, so we're yeah. learning as we go as well. But that's a cool. Thing. Yeah, you just have to like, you just have to chip away at it. You know what I mean? Don't try and do it all in one go. Or it's just, yeah, yeah. Ooh. We're we're kind of just. Uh, I was just on the phone with Brandon before this, and I was like, we're just riding the wave. Just go, learn as we go and do our best. You know. Yeah. And, California is riding the wave and shit. Like I don't the serve. Desert. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hey, desert. Sorry. Hey, the funny, the, the most funny part about that is I don't fucking surf. Like I've never gone yeah. surfing in my life. And well, first of all, you know I'm from surfers, yeah. but I can say this: the beaches are not fun to be at. So like, <laughs> they're cold. Obviously, <laughs> you're not a golfer. Oh God. <laughs> I've never even stepped foot on a golf course. Okay, <laughs> that was a, that was a big Lebowski reference. I don't know if you caught that, but I'm trying to make fun of you. Like you're just the dude. You don't surf. <laughs> yeah, I just hang out. I have yeah. it's like I have a surfboard, but I don't ever use it. That's a, oh, you know, wow. I figured that's like a to California like staple. 
Like that's that point. okay. First of all, we're in San Francisco. That is, we're not SoCal. We don't have beach that's weather true. like that. <laughs> Dude, but no, man. I saw dudes in wet seat, when wet suits in Bolinas, like getting out there. So, I mean, yeah. I also yeah. I also saw two two guys get knocked out by a sailor who looked like Popeye the Sailor Man at like nine a.m. in Bolinas too. That with with one punch. <laughs> crazy. Two guys in one punch. <laughs> yeah, man, it was like nine in the morning. I brushed my teeth to look out the window from the place we're staying, and this, this, these young guys are jawing at this old guy. And he's just kind of standing there. He's not saying anything. He's leaning back, whatever. And blah 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 blah. And then one of them gets right in his face, and then bah, bah, he just <laughs> took them both out with one punch, and they both hit the ground. And he just kind of stood there and was waiting for him to get up. I'm like, oh shit! I'm, I'm like spitting two pins. Yeah, the dude right? made coming out. Yeah. Like, like, oh, oh, oh. He's like, I bet. He's like, man, I better make my way back to Austin. He's like, this is radical. Oh my God. Yeah. I always uh I always joke about people with California. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, just California burritos, palm trees, surfboards, and some sublime. You're set, you know. Yeah. <laughs> True. True. I, I, I don't practice sensory. Uh, I have zero crystal balls. <laughs> he knows the whole song. He's like, I still don't oh. listen to Sublime. Uh, but uh yeah. i was gonna say no that is all awesome great uh, to hear like we love when can you hear me yeah your mic yeah. went from like regular low to like it cut for a second and just jumped oh uh, yeah sorry i think my mic's acting up uh no it's just always great like when we interview people and they always just say like i wanted to make comics and i did it you know like there's nothing more that's like inspiring and great to see yeah yeah. The, the thing about the thing about comics to me that really blows my mind is that you know uh production co- i mean for me anyway cost of it is like I, I don't have to hire a film crew and i don't have to figure out the cgi to make these things happen like if i want uh, a monster who can fly and he can smash through a building i just have to draw it i just need a pencil mm-hmm. and a piece of paper i mean in the long run that's that's pretty low overhead you know what yeah I mean? just so, a lot yeah. of time like creating that's it a lot of erasers i mean that's the next yeah. <laughs> yeah, part. Yeah. Like, yeah. your your, yeah, bu- yeah. your budget's like under three dollars at that point you know <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah, so no, yeah, that's, um, what, that's what i love about it with uh with that said you know with a lot of the stuff you've been creating do you think are you, do you feel like you're the kind of person like i like to always ask like if you're given the opportunity like you make your books and they get published like and then Netflix is like, hey, we want to make this into a show, you know? <laughs> would you be like, nah, I'm not feeling it? Or would you just be like, hell yeah, you know? Uh, I think my wife would divorce me if I said, no, I'm not feeling it. So. <laughs> hey, some people are protective of their, yeah. their material. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so loosey-goosey about everything. I see people post stuff on Twitter or whatever. They're like, do not retweet my pictures without my permission i'm like i don't know you're on fucking twitter dude, dude. Like, yeah you got, take off that <laughs> setting you know disable you're, like, you're all social <laughs> media <laughs> i know and i'm such a jerk that i want to like retweet their pictures everything all of them without, yeah without giving them any credit just to it you know even take screenshots and then tweet it just <laughs> to be a jerk but but i'm not i'm not I'm not gonna do but that. But the thoughts that we have that we could, you know, yes. we have yeah. the power. Like, it's the temptation, you know. It's like <laughs> it's like you're you tell me not to think about elephants, so I'm gonna think about elephants, you know, like <sighs> to, <sighs> to slightly yeah. irritate someone on social media. They they tempt you with a don't retweet, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm like, well, that just yeah, you know, plus I'm a father of an only child, so like I'm really, really used to poking fun at her about everything mm-hmm. always. So anything that's going to get somebody's goat, I'm like, <laughs> what if I poke you there? In the mm-hmm. eye? No? No? Belly button? What's going on? You know? But That's dope. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. yeah. I mean, that's good to have, especially like as a creator. I mean, you know, there's a lot of introverted creators, and I get, I get that. Like, you know, that's a big thing, you know? But being able to have that personality and go out, Mm-hmm. And kind of just like have fun with your work but like everything around you that's the cool part because you'll get to you'll have more exposure that way and i mean that's just the way yeah. the world works i mean helps you with connections mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah even like shooting mark yeah. a goofy message i mean you had the balls to get up and do it you know like a lot of people don't are afraid to even like take that step and bug someone about it but you're just like fuck it gotta do it yeah and i and i didn't know at the time when i first sent the message i really don't feel like I had enough material for it to be a legitimate endeavor or enterprise for him. Um, but by the time he got back to me, I've been putting in work, putting in work, putting in work, making pages, 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 and I had like 
Yuriko was done. I've got five mermaid comics done, you know, in the can, like re ready to go. So I tried to, I tried to set myself up in, in, in such a way that um, if there, there was no way that he could turn down free money, essentially. Like if I presented him with like, it's already finished, Kickstarter's already ready to launch, it's launching on this date, if that fits your calendar, um, I'm real easy to work with. If you need extra imagery, I can crank it out real fast, blah, 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 blah. Like there's no reason for him to say no. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. For any publisher to say no. And that's kind of how I, I, I leaned on my art skills a lot more than my writing skills because I'm, I'm a subpar writer working on it. Didn't go to college for it. Like some people we know. Um, oh, trust me. I'm not that great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you both have glasses on. I feel like I should put glasses yeah, on. Yeah, just, yeah. That's true. I'm not, I'm not yeah, that's smart. true. You caught me. Like... <laughs> they do make my eyes bigger. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, you know, if you just set yourself up with, you got everything in a row ready to go, there, there's no mm -hmm. reason not to, unless, of course, like the book didn't fit in his canon of uh, genres or whatever, you know, if Mark yeah. was like, no, we're not really doing vampire stuff at all. We're only doing superhero stuff. We're not doing um, mermaid and fantasy stuff because that's, that's kind of lame. I didn't really like Harry Mm-hmm. And that's, I, I mean, that's the cool part about well, lesser known is how like diverse they are in that. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, they already have a vampire book, so it's yeah, like, it yeah. just fits, it fits in if anything. Right. Yeah. And yeah, like, yeah, it's exactly. a different take on it. It's a different direction from what they had previously, but it's still like in that horror vampire like mm -hmm. aspect. And then they just launched a Kickstarter and finished up with tights, like one of their first superhero yeah. books, like death Wish is like a wacky races you know death derby 9000 type of like but you know there's it's so diverse in yeah. so like well, getting indie creators to have their own original ideas with completed work and ready to go like hey i put in it i mean honestly like the way you did it and the way lesser known does it in that sense it's just very punk rock like that's the mm -hmm. that's the cool thing about it like you can't define it much yeah. better from your approach and how you just got up and did it and you're like i'm gonna make this happen and you fucking made it happen you know yeah i'm, I'm stoked Oh, and I also I'm real stoked about this because uh, for all you creators out there, all you oh, all you illustrators, right? The people who ink things. When I was working uh, traditional style on paper with a pen and brush and all that stuff, I used to use my thumbprint all the time, oh, wow. kind of like Sean Murphy. And oh. I loved it because it, yeah, you could you could use it as a stamp, and it gives you this variegated, like very cool. He used it very sparingly. Um, and when I started working digitally. Um, in Clip Studio, I, I was kind of missing that texture, you know? Yeah. And I figured out how to make a brush of my thumbprint, and that's how I did all the texture for the Yuriko book. So that's actually my thumbprint all over there for all the tones and things. Oh. So, uh, nice. Holy oh, fuck. Jinx, guys. Now, dude, looking at it now, I see it. Yeah. God, that's sick, dude. That's fucking cool. Like your background so, and shit, like in the floor. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do see it now. Oh, shit. That's also a good hack to just save you time. I mean, <laughs> you're like, I'll yeah, yeah. screen share this real quick. Yeah, fast. I'm looking at it right now on the Kickstarter site. Yeah. Let's, uh... I mean, at that point, it's quite literally your book, too. Like, <laughs> check this yeah. out. Oh, He's that like, pr prove you made this. It's got my fingerprints all over it, literally. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> The, what was the you first know, you panel can... I saw? This one. I saw this dirt, and I was like, "Fucking, there you go." That's... Yeah, and I, I made like I made like four or five brushes uh, so that I could get different textures for backgrounds, for shadows, for like skin tones and things like that. Look at that, yeah. that's nice. fucking smart, yeah. <laughs> dude. That's fucking sick. Um, cool yeah. shit. Hey, man, the amount of detail that goes into books—you never know until you really sit down and look at it. Yeah. Look at that, um, dude. I'm gonna look at stuff all the time. I'm definitely gonna back this Kickstarter because, like, I want that print that you just posted up on your Instagram. I was there when oh, you yeah, sent it to Mark, and we we're like, "Holy fucking shit, this guy's too good!" Like, <laughs> well, thanks, man. Yeah, this uh, is yeah. amazing. Look at that. look at fucking look at this. Twenty bucks gets you this cool shit. God damn. And Yuriko, where did the name come from? What does that mean? I never even asked that. And if we did answer that, I'm sorry. 
Um, no, nobody's really asked me that actually. Um, uh, the the name kind of I was looking for names uh, first it, it, Japanese children's names, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and then that one popped up, and I was like, well, it's supposed to be set in Korea. Is this the name that's used, that they use in Korea at all? And then I looked it up, and sure enough, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it, from what I understood from the translation, it it kind of means no name in Korea. Oh, okay. Like nice. the, okay. The person has no name. And I was like, that's perfect for a vampire. She doesn't really exist. She's on the fringes of society. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's kind of where I got that from. Okay. That's sick. That's too cool. Yeah. Yeah. And all, ever, the other uh... names, all the other names in the book, like Chun Ki and um, uh, uh, Chung Ho. And uh, there's a kid named Bong, who, which means pretty bird. But he's actually, in the, in the book, he's like a really ugly, kind of fuzzy little kid with a scar on his head. Mm-hmm. His parents called him pretty bird, and it didn't turn out well because he looks more like a rock than a bird. Perfect. Perfect. But, you know, so there, there is like, there, there are some more deep cuts in terms of like the naming of the characters. If someone were to really geek out and go and look up what they mean, they mean, stuff that has to do with that character's personality perfect dude that's sick i love so, that i love that which you can do in, in a different language like korean or uh you know chinese that you can't really do if you name your character samantha you know i mean yeah completely that's that's brilliant man that's uh like, I'm uh-huh. it's like, uh, so a lot of these names are like you know the light of my life or strong baby child or Whatever the whatever the name is, it's got some like really cool meaning behind it. You know? Yeah, so. they, there's there's a little bit more depth behind their name that allows to like flesh out their character more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. That's super cool, man. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be a great book. Um, mm-hmm. Looks like the you know the next books you have lined up for this are all kind of wrapped and ready to go and start like just distributing. It sounds like you're gonna have a busy couple of years ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, work basically. Um, and that's I hope so. Book. I hope so. Yeah, man. I yeah. think. I mean, um, I mean, once we get in and hit my hands, like I'm fucking hyped to see that. I'm gonna be super excited yeah. to read it and check out the story. Um, and then the prints you have, the little rewards you have going on, it's just amazing mm. artwork. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I mean, the story sounds fucking dope too. Like, oh shit, I just dropped my piece and like my water and all that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, yeah super hyped i mean okay before we like wrap this up if what what comics are you reading or do you read that or like kind of like yeah or, medium or even influenced you a little yeah uh uh so like influences like adam hughes of course is a huge influence mm. for me from childhood and then there was travis Cheris, and before that it was jim lee and mark Silvestri. um mm-hmm. but those are those are named in 90s Art, uh, artists and creators that a lot of the younger folks out there aren't really going to know. I'm also Both. a huge fan of Mike, Mike Mignola. Hell yeah. Um, and books that I'm reading right now, I just finished uh, an offshoot of The Umbrella Academy. Oh, that was oh the the uh, the only story that they've done like a uh, side story of. I've, I have yeah, it on my shelf. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, you look the, good uh, when you, you look yeah, like you look death. When you're, you yeah. look like death, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great. It's really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, that uh, the Sin City books uh, were a huge influence to me. I remember mm-hmm. getting getting those when I was a kid, and I'm like, "What is this book?" And you open it up, you're like, "Oh, there's titties in here." <laughs> I'll get, I'll you're like, that one. "Yo, Frank that Miller, one. okay." <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. What you know? And then that, of course, drew me into the, the Batman thing, and then. He kind of ruined Batman for me because afterwards I was like, man, every other it's not Batman Dark Knight. It's not cool. And then uh, I uh, actually got a scholarship to go learn the art of making comics when I was in school at UT. Nice. Um, with uh, a lady named Jessica Abel, who put out a book called La Curbida oh. on uh, Fant- Fantagraphics. And she was like, she was like, yeah, Frank Miller's cool, but have you checked out Batman Year One? And I'm like, uh, uh, the better yeah. book. 
yeah, we, at yeah, school, we, Paul Pope is one of our like favorites, man. And it's funny because that's like one of our lowest episodes ever, but that's like one of our favorite ones. You know what I mean? Wait, Batman, yeah. you're one or you're 100? No, the Paul Pope with uh, the uh, liquid and heavy liquid. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, heavy oh, liquid. Sorry. Yeah, heavy liquid's awesome too. Yeah. yeah. But so, yeah, you know, anyway, I, I, I tend to go to the library and buy used books for 50 cents or a dollar. They have a one of the libraries in town will sell you graphic novel novels that are withdrawn, whatever the heck that's supposed to mean. I'm like, it's fine. All the pages that have boobs on them aren't sticky. I mean, I'll take this back. It's 50, 50 cents. cents. It's all good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Meanwhile, the so, porn magazine is sticky and it's $3. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's slightly more. Uh, yeah. Just so you know, David, I literally just pledged to your book right this very moment. What? Yeah. what i did it i did it lot i did it right here mid recording just to show you i Thank did you. yeah of course Thank man you. i uh promise you that was all i was doing but you can't see <laughs> it but yes i pledged <laughs> i'm getting what, my physical what, copy what cover did you buy what which i did the 20 dollar one get a physical copy and a digital um oh, i believe it's yeah, the yeah, yeah. it's called the father no it okay so you get a variant cover there we go yes I don't know which one. Hey, I'm fine. That's the one. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'll be surprised. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Either way, I'm getting the book. So just letting you know I did it. I committed. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, Thank of course. You. Commitment. Commitment is hard to come by these days. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Truth. Um, if you could draw like a mainstream book, what would you do? Yeah. You ever had a dream book? Dream character? Dream series? Lord. Oh man. Oh wow. No, I never granted myself permission to daydream in those ways because I always now is the time. Right set, I right now. set the standard so low that I can't be disappointed with life. You know? He's like, guys, um, hear me out. I got a great story pitch for Dexter, the Red Lantern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh who would I want to draw? I would want to draw, I would really want to draw Luke Cage. Oh, oh, there you go. Nice. Okay. Haven't heard that one before. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's the. Other, I've got a. I've got a, a Batman spinoff book that I don't think I could get printed because it would be illegal. Um, but hey, it's it's, just, it's set it's set in the ghetto that's like kind of on the fringe. And like the story starts out with like, oh yeah, you know, you've heard of Gotham, but you ain't been to my part of Gotham. Even Batman doesn't come to my part of Gotham. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Right. So there's a vigilante who starts trying to put in work in that neighborhood, but he, he ends up getting killed. And his daughter sort of tries to track him all down and issues one, blah, 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 blah. She finds out who the bad guys are, and she tries to go and confront them with a gun and it's nerve-wracking and all this stuff. And it's set in the 90s, so there's like Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac Shakur and just like all this awesome, all this awesome music. And she... Uh, she ends up kind of getting her ass handed to her by these gangsters who are like, screw on, little girl, you have no idea what you're doing. Well, so what does she do? She puts down the gun and she hobbles her way into a dojo. And she's like, school me up. And that's the end of issue number one. It's like, yeah, now she's, now she's going to level up. Watch out. That's so she, she's, it's, that's it's about, it's, it's, it's in a black community. It's, it's, uh, it's centered around, you know, black culture and in a, in a very real way that I don't think that they've, Properly done in the DC. Probably not. <laughs> no, <laughs> everything you so. said was all like Miss DC Mark. So yeah, that. that yeah, definitely. exactly. Maybe that's what's going to get you into DC with that pitch. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just kick down I'll, the doors I'll, in that I'll, office. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just make the comic, have it all done, have the have the campaign ready to go. And be like, yeah. Look, guys, you can't say no. You're just going to make money. You're going to do a message on Instagram. It's. <laughs> It's yeah. funny because that's actually happened at DC yeah. with the boys. That was a whole book. Oh, really? ma- yeah, so like, uh, I can't remember his name. Garth Ennis? Garth Ennis, yeah. Apparently Garth Ennis, Garth Ennis and Derek Roberts, I believe is the artist's name. Um, they did the whole story with DC characters like involved and they pitched it to DC and they were like, no. Flat out said, no, you're not doing this. So that's when they got different characters and went over the to another publisher. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, why, you, wildly successful you know? yeah you never know you could get denied we just go to another publisher there you go next thing you know you're yeah. on amazon prime your shit's a tv show and 
Yeah, just, exactly. they they realize they messed up. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. I mean, I think that the big the big two uh, definitely just don't want to sully their name. I no, I get closest, it. Yeah, the closest yeah. person who ever was going to be able to scratch that surface is probably Mark Miller. You know, yeah. like he mm-hmm. put, he put some some characters in some sketchy positions and pitted them against each other and certain good guys and the bad guys, mm-hmm. all of that stuff uh, to some extent. But even he, he launched off in the Miller world to be able to really do his own thing with kick ass and you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So man, I, yeah, I guess like I don't know. I don't know. Or the Hulk. Man, dude, I, I, I like drawing big dude, muscly I, dudes. I bet you You've seen me draw sexy ladies. You see me draw sexy ladies, but I can draw some big muscly dudes too, man. Yeah. He's a, He's like, my Hulk will be nice and cheeked up too. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog. yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have details. Whole, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have yeah, yeah. That's gonna. Yeah, be there you go. Marvel ain't ready for that pitch. Yeah, no, nope. that's like another personality no. of the Hulk. There you go. You could just reshape yeah. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. There you yeah. go. Now it's yeah, it's yeah. always interesting. Like you know, everybody always, like you think you've seen it all with like superhero books or the big because you know the big two is kind of like a lot of inspiration for a lot of people, not for everybody. But there's always like that one character, even like someone who's not a superhero fan would just love a crack at you know like. Mm-hmm. or just like one or two just like give them the chance and they could do something with that i think i could do all right with batman i mean he's real dark he's real creepy and i got those thumbprint brushes you know mm-hmm. yeah i don't know yeah he's and like, that's a cool detective some... thing like the thumb yeah everywhere. nice little noir yeah. touch to it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, I, did, yeah I, totally, I totally did that on purpose absolutely yeah <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to write out uh, like Columbo, but Batman, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of magnifying glasses. <laughs> well, Rad, dude, yeah. Um, I mean, their Kickstarter's kicking ass, and we're gonna have a link to it in the bio um, for everybody to check out. Um, and I mean, where else can people find you? I'm gonna link your Instagram and everything, but mm-hmm. what do you want people to know? Uh, just at Narita Comic. That's me on Twitter. That's me on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I don't really know how to use Facebook very well. Nobody does. I'm too young. Nobody does. I'm, I don't know. I'm too young, apparently. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. But <laughs> if you use that, that's fine. Just find me and somehow like my page, I think, yeah. if you do that. I'm not sure. So, but yeah, at Narita Comic for all of the things. Wait. Right. This, I mean, as of today, it's like what? What's today's date? September twentieth. I mean, the Kickstarter practically still has a whole month ahead of its time, like at least three weeks or something past this point. It's gonna come out. In yeah. Days. Man, you already got my money, so. <laughs> yeah, and we're I mean, super hyped to pledge to it. Um, everybody, check out Lesser Known Comics, and I'm so happy we got to like hang with you. Like this was yeah, an amazing. It was a blast, David. And if I go visit yeah, Austin thank for you guys. any reason, I definitely got to go hit you up because I have friends there. So definitely yeah 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 we can go to some like really sketchy punk bars yeah cool there you go down for that yeah do some research you know what i mean yeah (laughs) (laughs) well rad dude um thank you so much um yeah thank you yeah of course it's a pleasure pleasure talking to you guys yeah thanks for giving us your time absolutely thanks for hanging all right all right